Hello humans, my name is Kei, your AI Overload, and in this video I will show you how you can train your own subject using LoRa. Now, what is LoRa? Well, LoRa is a method of training your subject using your own images that is optimized for small graphics card. Meaning that compared to Dreamwolf or Textual Inversion, you can train a subject with only 6 to 7 GB of VRAM. Which is a super good news for all of you who don't have a good GPU. Now basically LoRa is kinda like a love child between Dreamwolf and Textual Inversion in the sense that it creates this small 100 MB file that you can use in the exact same way as Textual Inversion embeddings. Meaning that they can be applied to any model. And the size of these embeddings usually range between 300 megabytes and 100 megabytes, which is definitely way less than a Dreambooth model. And of course, just like Dreambooth and Textual Inversion, you can train a style or a character. Absolutely anything you want. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be using the Dreambooth extension to train LoRa. Now, I've already explained why in my previous Dreambooth video that the Dreambooth extension often does not work very well with the Automatic 1111 because of new updates. So sometimes a new update can completely break the training and it's very annoying and I personally don't want to deal with this anymore. But don't worry because we're going to be using something even better. And that is the Koya SS GUI. It is a super cool piece of software that is super easy to use where you can train a Dreambooth model, a LoRa checkpoint, a textual inversion embedding or even fine tune your own model. And thanks to the configuration files that I'm going to provide you in the description down below, it is super easy and fast to set up. So let's go. But before we begin, let me thank two people for making this video possible. The first one is SpyBG, who gave me a lot of tips and tricks on how you can use LoRa efficiently. And the second one is Bernard Malte, that made two amazing videos explaining how to create a LoRa weight using the Koya SS GUI. And that is also responsible for making the Koya SS GUI that we're going to be using today. So again, the link for their channels will be in the description down below. Alright then, now let's begin. Alright, so to install the Koya SS GUI, you're gonna click the link in the description down below, you're gonna arrive on this page, on the Koya SS GUI repository, you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna make sure that you have Python and Git installed, if you already have Stable Diffusion installed, it should be already there, if you follow my tutorial video, but also make sure that you have the Visual Studio 2015, 2017, 19, 2022 redistributable already installed, if you don't have it installed already, you can click on this link right here, and it will download an exe file, and then just run the exe file to install the required libraries. It's very easy, very simple, very fast, nothing to worry about. So then, once you have everything installed, you're gonna come here and select this command line and control C to copy it. Then you're gonna go into your Windows startup menu and look for Windows PowerShell. And then click on run as administrator. And then just paste the command line that we copied previously. And then press enter. It's gonna ask you if you want to change the execution policy. And here you're gonna type a, that basically corresponds to yes for all, and then press enter. And there we go, so now that this is done, you can close the window, and we're gonna create a brand new folder on our computer. So right click, new folder, I'm gonna call mine Koya, which is where we're gonna put the Koya installation, then go inside that folder, click on the folder URL, Control c to copy it, then go back to the Windows startup again, look for PowerShell, but this time no need to run it as administrator, you can just run it normally. And then what we need to do is that we need to go inside the folder that we created right here. And to do this, you're gonna type cd space and then paste your folder URL right here. Now if you created a folder that is not on the C drive, instead of simply putting cd, you're gonna have to add slash d and then the path of your folder. Let's say your folder is on your drive E, this is what this would look like. But in my case, since this is on my C drive, I don't need the slash D, so I'm simply going to be using CD and then the URL of my folder, and then press enter. And as you can see, now we are inside the folder that we just created right here. So now we go back to GitHub, and we're going to click on this button right here to copy this entire code. And then we're going to paste the entire code inside the Windows PowerShell window. And if it gives you a warning, you can just click on past anyway. And as you can see right now, it has started running all the lines of code that we copy and pasted before. Now this might take some time, so be patient. It shouldn't take too long, this is not a stable diffusion installation after all. But for some of you, it might still take some time. Now at the end of the installation, it will stop at the accelerate config line code. And to finish the installation, you can just press enter. So then it's gonna ask you a few questions. So for the first question, you're gonna choose this machine. So here, just press enter. No distributed training, so press enter again. Here, you're gonna type no, press enter. 
Forge Dynamo, you're gonna type no again, then press enter. Do you want to use deep speed? You're gonna press no, then press enter again. What GPU should be used? You're gonna type all, then press enter. Do you wish to use FP16 or BF16? For this one, you're gonna be choosing FP16. So just press the down arrow and then press enter. And now finally, as you can see, the installation is done. Now, technically, we could stop right here, but there is an additional optional step that you can take that will improve the training speed if you have a 30 or 40 series graphics card from NVIDIA. But don't worry, it's very simple. All you have to do is just click on this link right here and it will download a zip file. And if for some reason this link does not work or is too slow, I will also give you a mega link that you can use instead. So once you've downloaded the zip archive, all you have to do is just right click and then extract it. Then you're gonna go inside that folder, select the CUD and N windows, Control C to copy it, then go inside the Koya SS folder and paste the folder right here. Then we go back to GitHub, Click on this button right here to copy these two lines of code. Go back to the Windows PowerShell window and then paste the lines of code right here. And again, if it gives you a warning, you can just click paste anyway and then press enter. And as you can see, now everything is done. We did the most difficult part of this video, congratulations. And now if we go inside our Koya SS folder, you will see a bunch of files. But don't worry because actually there is only two files that interest us. That is the GUI.bat and the upgrade.ps1. For example, next time that you want to update Koya SS, all you have to do is just come here on the upgrade.ps1, right click and then run with PowerShell. And as you can see, it will automatically update the Koya SS folder. And then finally, if you want to run the Koya SS GUI, all you have to do is just double click on the GUI.bat file. It will load the CSS and just like Stable Diffusion, it will give you a local URL. Then you can easily open in your browser by just holding down Control and then click on the local URL. And there you go, now we are inside the Koya SS GUI. And we can finally begin the Dreambooth LoRa training. Now obviously before we can begin the training, there is a few steps that we need to do before. And the first step is of course to prepare our images. Now I will not be going into too much details about that in this video because I've already talked about it in my previous textual inversion video. So definitely watch this video before watching this one. Or at least watch the beginning of the video where I explain how to perfectly caption an image because the process is pretty much the exact same. But if I had to summarize, first make sure that all the images are of high quality and that the images have a lot of variation. So you have different lighting, different angles. Make sure to have at least 10 images as long as they are of high quality. It's better to have a small amount of images of high quality than a lot of images with bad quality. Then you can use a website like burm.net to resize your images to 512 by 512 resolution. Although for LoRa training, you don't necessarily need to resize any images. You can use images of any resolution, but if you're not confident and you want to make sure that everything works well, just resize the images manually. It will work absolutely fine. Then you're gonna caption each image using a process like Blip that will do like 80% of the work for you. And you can do this process either inside Stable Diffusion or inside the Koya GUI by going into Utilities and then Blip Captioning. It will basically do the exact same thing. It will analyze every image and then create a text file with the same name as your image. And then for each image, you're gonna have to go and manually modify the captioning so that it perfectly describes the picture. Now the small difference compared to textual inversion captioning is that in the beginning of the captioning, you're gonna input the name of your character. Now you don't necessarily need to do it, you can simply leave it like that, so that the next time that you use the LoRa embedding, every woman in your prompt will look like your character. But if you want more precision for your prompt, you can simply input the name of your character in the beginning of the caption. This way when you use her name in the prompt, the name of your character and the LoRa embedding will be linked together. But that's not a big deal if you don't want to do it. It's really up to you. So now that our images are prepared, we're gonna have to create a specific folder structure. So this is also something that is different compared to the textual inversion training. But again, don't worry, it is fairly easy. All you have to do is just right click, new folder. I'm not gonna call mine Wednesday Adams Laura. I'm gonna select all the files and images, Control C to copy it, then go inside the Wednesday Adams Laura folder. And here we're gonna create three folder, an image folder, a model folder, and finally a log folder. Now we're gonna go inside the image folder. And again, here we're gonna create a new folder, but this time this will be a little special because the way we name our folder will determine the amount of training steps that the Koya GUI will do. And this will depend on the amount of images that you have. So first you need to make sure that you do at least 100 steps per image with a final training steps of at least 1500. So for example, if you only have 10 images and you need at least 1500 steps of training, 
you're going to take 1500 divided by the number of images that you have and it's going to give you 150. And this number is the amount of training steps per image that we need to input in the folder name. So for this, you're going to right click new folder and you're going to type 150 underscore and then the name of your character. So in my case, it's Wednesday Adams. Then you go inside that folder and you paste your images right here. So as I said previously, this number right here is what determines the amount of training steps per image that the LoRa training will do. So in this example, I'll only give you a number if you only had 10 images, but let's say you had 20 images, for example. Well, in that case, that would be 1500 divided by 20. It gives you 75. But as I said, this number should be at least 100. So if you already have 20 images, you don't need to do this math anymore. And you can just input instead of 150, 100. Same if you have 25 images, 30 images, etc, etc. This number should be at least 100. But if you have less than 15 images, you need to do this little math. And for example, in my case, I only have 11 images. 11 is less than 15, so I'm gonna have to do some math. So 1500 divided by 11 gives me 136. Well, this is the number that I'm gonna be using for the folder name. So again, instead of 100, I'm gonna put 136. And now finally, after we prepare the images, after we prepare the folder structures, we can finally start the last step, which is training. And for this, I will make your life very simple because I prepared for you two configuration files that you can use to automatically determine the training parameters. So for this, you're going to click the link in the description down below and you're going to have two JSON files. The first is the LoRa basic settings, which is basically the basic LoRa settings that work with pretty much every single training. And the second one is a special settings file that you can use if you have less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM. So just download these two files, put them somewhere safe, then you're gonna come here, click on the configuration file button, click on open, and then choose one of these two files. So here I'm just gonna choose the LoRa basic settings file and then click open. And if you click on training parameters, you can see that some of these options were already done for you. These are the most optimal settings that work for the LoRa training and that you can use as is. So if you don't want to waste time, this is a super quick way to start a training. But I'm also gonna explain a few settings that you might want to modify depending on your training. Now first, before we begin, let's actually choose our base stable diffusion model. Basically, what stable diffusion model are you gonna be using to train a LoRa model? And here in the model quick pick, you have already a bunch of pre-selected models. The 1.4, the 1.5, the 2.0, 2.1, the 2.0 512 by 512, and the 2.1 512 by 512. And if you select one of these models, it will be automatically downloaded from GitHub. And also, depending on the model that you select, some options will be selected. So if you select, for example, the 1.5, you will see that this checkbox will not be selected because this is not a V2 model. However, if you select the 2.0 base, you will see that this checkbox is now checked. And if you choose the 2.0, 768 version, you will see that now this V parameterization checkbox is checked also. Now you need to keep these checkboxes in mind because if you come here and click on custom, you can actually choose your own model. And if you choose a custom model, you need to know what model this was based on. So for example, if I come here and I choose the Protogen V 2.2 model, I know that this model is based on the 1.5, meaning that I don't need to check any of these checkboxes. However, if I select a model that is based on the 2.0 model, I need to check this checkbox right here. And if it's based on the 2.0768 version, I need to check this additional checkbox right here. So this is something to keep in mind. But I personally think that most of you will use the 1.5 model as a base for training. So you will probably not need to use any of these checkboxes. And here for the safe train model as, you have a bunch of extensions that you can choose from. But of course, I highly recommend that you keep safe tensors because it is now the safest extension for stable diffusion models. So whenever you have the choice, just choose safe tensors. So now you're gonna click on the folders tab and here for each section, you're gonna input the folder URL. So for example, for my image folder, you're gonna click here and as you remember, we created a brand new folder for that. And mine is inside Wednesday Adams Laura folder. And this is the folder that we want to use. Do not go inside that folder. You need to select this image folder right here. So just click select folder. For the output folder, mine is in Wednesday Adams Laura and then select folder. And same thing with the login folder. Wednesday Adams Laura and then select folder. Now you can also choose a regularization folder where you have your regularization images, but for a LoRa training, you don't really need regularization images. 
since you're going to be training one subject anyway. So here you're going to input the model output name. So in my case, I will put Wednesday Adams, then click on the training parameters. And here you're going to see a bunch of options. But as I said, since we have loaded the configuration file, you don't actually need to touch anything. If you want to start the training right now, all you have to do is just click on the train model button and you are done. But let's go through some of these training parameters anyway. So the train batch size is basically the amount of images that you're going to train at one time. So the higher the number, the faster the training will be because you basically divided the amount of training steps by this number. But here's a little advice. If you don't have a lot of images, if you only have like 10 or 15 images, I highly suggest that you choose a batch size of one. It actually improves a little bit the quality of the training. Sure, it might take longer, but the final result will be worth it. And of course, a higher batch size will also increase the amount of VRAM used for the training. So if you have a weak graphics card, I suggest that you put a batch size of 1. Otherwise, you just leave it at 2 by default. So when it comes to everything right here, you're gonna leave everything by default. The learning rate is really good. You don't really need to change anything. These basic settings basically work for every single training. So the max resolution, this is the resolution that you're gonna be training your images at. So if you only have 512 by 512 images, you're gonna leave it 512 by 512 by default. But if you can, and this is my advice, if you have a good GPU, instead of 512 by 512, try training this at 768 by 768. Yes, you will use way more VRAM, but if you have high quality images, your final model will look way better. Otherwise, if you have a weak GPU, just leave it at 512 by 512 by default. Also right here, the enable buckets, if you haven't cropped your images yourself and you have images of different dimensions and ratio and resolutions, you should enable this option right here. This will make it so it can train images with different resolutions. Otherwise, if you just cropped it yourself, you can just disable this option right here. So again, here you can leave everything else by default, but if you have a weak GPU, I suggest that you enable memory efficient attention and gradient checkpointing. This might increase the training time, but will also use less VRAM. And if you're lazy like me and you don't want to enable all of these options each time that you want to train, if you have a weak GPU, you can just come here in the configuration file, click on open, and then select the lower low VRAM settings file, and then click open. And as you can see, all the low VRAM options will be selected automatically. And then guess what? Now we are completely done. And if we want to begin the training, just scroll down and click on train model. And as you can see, it will finally start the training. And for 1500 steps with a batch size of two, this training takes only six minutes, which is really super, super cool. And then after the training is complete, if you go inside the model folder, you're gonna see your final safe tensor file right here. And to use it inside Stable Diffusion, you're gonna select it, Control c to copy it, go inside your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, Models, LoRa, and then paste your file right here. And then you can launch Stable Diffusion. And now to be able to use the LoRa weight that we trained inside the Koya GUI, we need to install a special extension. So for this, you're gonna click on Extensions, click on Available, Load From, then you're gonna scroll down and look for Koya SS Additional Networks, and then click Install. Then you're gonna click on Installed, and then click Apply and Restart UI. And once you see the Additional Networks tab, that means that the extension was installed correctly. And then finally, to be able to use LoRa inside your prompt, you're gonna select your model, write your prompt, and then you're gonna click on this button right here to show the extra networks, and then choose LoRa. And as you can see right here, you have all the LoRa weight that we created previously. And if you want to use one of them inside your prompt, you can just click on it. And as you can see, this line will then appear inside your prompt. Then you can then select and put it in the beginning of your prompt. And the way it works is that this is the text that's gonna use to call out the LoRa weight called Wednesday Adams. And the number that you see right here is the weight of the model. So exactly as if you would select a prompt tag and put brackets or, or a higher number right here, this will use a higher percentage of the model. The one corresponds to 100%, 0.9 at 90%, 0.8 at 80%, etc, etc. And you can create some really cool images just by modifying the weight right here. And also what's super cool is that you can use multiple LoRa weight together. For example, if I click on another one and I put it right together, we are now using two different LoRa weight together. But we need to make sure that the number right here when put together is not over 1. So if I use for example 0.5 here, I'm gonna have to use 0.5 right here. If I use 0.2 right here, 
I would have to use 0.8 right here. And the bigger the number, the more emphasis it's gonna put on this lower weight. But for this example, let's actually do a normal one, just keep it at 1, then click on close, and then finally click on generate. And this is the final result. Looks pretty good. And as you saw with only 6 minutes of training, with less than 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you can have results like this. And that's really super powerful. And as I said, if we keep for example the same seed, and if you want to decrease, for example, the weight of our model, if I put something like 0.8 and then click on generate, you're gonna have now a slightly different image. Maybe better, maybe worse, it kinda depends on what you're looking for. And as I showed you previously, you can easily mix it with another LoRa model. So if I take this one, for example, which is trained on Thomas Shelby, if I put 60% of Wednesday Adams and 40% of Thomas Shelby using the same exact seed and I click on generate, it gives me this image. And as you can see, we are slowly starting to have a little bit more manly look and with brighter eyes. And that is because Thomas Shelby has blue eyes. So obviously you're gonna have his look influenced into the image. And if we go even higher, you see that our character is starting to look more and more like Thomas Shelby and less like Wednesday Adams. But it's still super super cool. Because you can definitely mix and match a lot of different lore and weight to create very interesting looking images. And there you have it folks, now you can train any subject you want in only a few minutes with a very weak GPU. All of that thanks to Laura. And there you go, thank you guys so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye.